All right, on to the job search. I'm excited to see where you guys get your internships, where you get your jobs. That's one of the really gratifying parts of, of this job that I have is watching you go off to do incredible things. And this class session lays the groundwork for that a little bit, so I enjoy being a part of it. We'll talk about resumes and cover letters in this class session. All right, starting off with resumes. Um, it's important to remember the goal of a resume, why you're sending a resume out. I want to make something perfectly clear. You will never get hired just on your resume. That just simply doesn't happen. Companies, organizations, agencies, they don't hire based only on a resume. That You'll be interviewed, you'll be, you'll be put through all kinds of steps for them to get to know you better before they decide to hire you. So there's, so, so there's the goal of a resume is not to get hired. The goal of a resume is so that the employer gives you another look. It's so they decide this person is interesting and important enough for us to, to learn more about this person. So you're never going to get hired off of your resume. So if you're doing your resume right, you're doing it so that you have, so that the organization decides to give you another look. One of the hard parts about being um, younger is that you don't have enough good stuff to put on your resume. Um, I want to hopefully inspire you all a little bit. It's true that you can't make up the stuff on your resume, but you can make it strong. And we're going to go through some tips on how to make the elements in your resume stronger. We don't have to make stuff up. In fact, please don't because you'll get caught. In fact, there have been CEOs of companies who have been fired because their resumes were, fr were, were falsified. So don't think it w won't ever catch up with you if you falsify things in your resume. So don't make it up, but you can make it strong. One observation about making it strong is that content always comes before design. So, in fact, I would encourage you to, to consider if, if you're not happy with your resume and you feel like you've never gotten it right, I encourage you to start from scratch. Rather than taking your existing resume and, and monkeying with it more and more, I encourage you to take your resume <coughs> and set it aside and start a brand new one. Focusing only on the content, don't do any designing. Just write down the information that you think is most important for every employer, potential employer to know about you and, uh, and start from there. So content is king when it comes to your resume. What you put in there matters before how it looks. What you should put in a resume are, when you're, when you're writing the content of your resume, it's important to focus on these three things. Focus on signals first. Um, when people read a resume, they usually don't read it word for word. Instead, they look for the information that's most important to them or most interesting to them. And those things are signals. So every resume has signals to the employer. What school you went to is a signal. <clears throat> what employer who employed you in your last job is a signal. Or what your job title was was a signal. So when you're writing down this resume of yours from scratch, focus on signals first. What are the signals in your history that will be important to employers? And then the next thing you do is relevant to each of those signals, you start filling in results. Now, a lot of people, when they fill in resumes, uh, when they start filling in the details of their job positions or their academic careers, they, they talk in very broad, nonspecific terms, and that hurts them. They don't realize it hurts them. When you're talking about results, you, need, you should talk about the numbers of people that you helped, the outcomes that resulted from your job or the changes that occurred because of your work. Those are the sorts of things that employers like to see. And then last, when you're filling in your brand new from scratch resume, focus on personality last. So things like hobbies, interests, those aren't the most important thing. You should include them in every resume because it helps give the employer a sense of who you are. But remember just saying things like, well, I like to read. Everybody, well, most people like to read. And so that's not all that distinguishing. So think of person, hobbies or interests that will distinguish you. Uh, this is true in grad school uh, applications too. When you all were applying for the Romney for the Romney Institute MPA program, the admissions committee would read your letters of intent, and in reading your letter, they they would sort of attach a hook to you, and they'd say, "Oh, this is the ultimate frisbee guy," or "This is the um, uh, this is the student who's been in Manhattan for the last eight years. Like these are the sorts of things that they think of. And, and resumes have that hook effect as well. So it's worth putting in some of your more interesting hobbies. Okay. Uh, after content comes design, and when it comes to design of resumes, this is the key. Make information easy to find. Don't go out to town. Don't use crazy, distracting things. Just make the information on your resume as easy to find as possible. Those are the best designed resumes. 
Butterick actually gives us examples of two resumes, a before and after. You'll notice the one on the left is a pretty typical resume format using needlessly fancy bullets and that weird background text. You'll notice that the categories of information are have bigger labels than the information in each category. Um, it's This is not a helpful resume design. If you look at the way Butterick redesigned that resume, uh, he emphasized the signals like UCLA, Hartford University, Boxer, Bedley, and Bell. The dates, the, the job titles are, are emphasis, emphasized with italics. Um, this is a much stronger resume. The design works better because it makes key information easy to find. The name and contact information is prominent here, but still professional. Don't ever do a name that makes you look like you're full of yourself or make it so small they can't find your information on the resume. Visually emphasize organizations and positions and de-emphasize category labels like Butterick did here. You'll notice the education, business experience, and other work experience categories were made small because it's not the category that matters, it's, what in each, it's what's inside each category that matters. You'll notice also that Butterick kept each bullet item short. Shorter bullets work better. They convey more direct information that's easier for people to find and uh, avoid distracting elements like pictures of yourself or excessively fancy paper. It's tempting to print your resume on like something ridiculous like cardstock, don't do it. Just use a simple, nice letterhead um, and uh, that's all you'll need. Okay, so let's apply all these principles we just covered. So taking something from an old resume of mine, uh, law clerk, Green Foundation USA in August of 2004, so about a decade ago is when I was there. Uh, and my job and my description of that position was assisting prominent microfinance organization with in-house and nonprofit legal issues such as advisement contact, contracts and corporate governance. Okay, you'll notice that I'm, I'm hiding a lot of signals here because of the format that I've used and also the words that I chose to describe this position. So let's start breaking things down and make it look a lot better. First of all, employer is probably more important than anything else there, so let's bold Grameen Foundation USA and put it on top. Um, the other signals that matter here are like the, the job title that I had, the dates I was there, where it was located. You'll notice that those kind of get buried and lost because of where I'm putting them, and so let's move them over here to make them more visually distinct. Uh, that top line is a little cluttered for my taste, and it's because I have June to August 2004. Does it really matter to the employer what months I was there? Maybe not, so let's change that to summer 2004. But, you know, I may not even need that. I mean, I'm at a point in my career where it doesn't matter if I was there in the summer. I, and so let's just get rid of all together and say I was there in 2004. Okay, now let's get to the description of that position. Um, that one's not very good. It's wordy um, and hides a lot of the most interesting stuff. And it also leaves out the fact that that summer I worked under the general counsel. That's a results type thing, saying that I worked for the general counsel. That's a strong signal. So let's change the text so it says I worked for the general counsel. I took out that prominent microfinance institution part because if somebody doesn't know who Grameen Foundation USA is and I'm telling them, ooh, this is a really prominent microfinance institution, then they're not going to be impressed. They're thinking I'm trying too hard. So I got rid of that. Instead, what's impressive is the fact that I worked for the general counsel that summer. And uh, But, you know, this one bullet isn't doing it because I still have a bunch of signals in here that are uh, blurred by the way I'm presenting them. So. Another thing that was important about that experience is, what, is the type of legal work that I got to do. Let's separate that out with another bullet, contracts, corporate governance, compliance. That conveys a lot more information more directly, and it's shorter, which is even better. So the employer can read that. But, you know, what I'm missing in here is numbers, because I don't have numbers, and numbers are great in a resume. And so when I think back on what I did that summer, one of my big jobs was completing solicitation registration for the organization in over 40 states. So let's plug that in there. F doing a registration process in 40 states, even if the employer doesn't know what that is, it looks like I did a lot of work. And in fact, it looks like I managed something that was relatively complex, which I did. And so that conveys a lot more information there too. So here's my revised resume uh, item rather than the old version, which buried a lot of information and made it hard to find. Here's the new version where I use both improved writing, improved content, and improved design to draw out the signals and to emphasize the results of what I did. Okay, let's move on now and talk about cover letters. Um, 
the goal of cover letters is exactly the same as that of resumes, which is to say you want the employer to give you another look. This isn't about getting the job. This is about getting an interview. And one of the best ways you can demonstrate your abilities to the employer is by writing to the job posting. Uh, I'm going to pull up a job posting and I'll show you what I mean. So I took this one off of Idealist. If anybody's interested in this job, I'll give you the link. But uh, this is uh, a job posting for a clinic supervisor, I think. I don't remember the name of the, the job title. But, but what you can see is they've actually taken the effort in this job description to categorize the types of responsibilities or functions that I would have if I got this job. Let's start digging into it. Well, you can see there are three main elements, communication, leadership, and job complexity. So those are the things that are most important, according to them, for me to know about this job. Well, that already gives me the outline for my letter. Let's dig into these three categories. You can see that cross-program, cross-integration matters, being a liaison matters, engaging staff matters, being able to respond to emergencies, do a budget review, being responsible for compliance is important, and also doing training. Uh, so, so, so this is a better description. This gives me a much better sense of what I should be writing about. So let's make a little outline. Well, I've got my three main categories, communications, leadership, and complexity. That's, those are the three main things they care about in writing the description. So those are what I should write about in my cover letter. And, I, and then I highlighted elements of each of those categories, that, it was a, that communications for them is about integration and being a liaison, that leadership for them is about engaging staff, and that complexity for them means like man managing a budget, compliance issues, doing training, responding to emergencies. So obviously this is a job that has a lot of different responsibilities. So when I take that outline and I actually draft my letter, I have my introduction, whatever it is, and then, I, and then following the OABC format, I give the agenda, which is you will find that my experience in communication leadership and managing complex job requirements has prepared me well for this position. Um, and then I start off with communication. In my position with Grameen Foundation USA, I integrated, remember, because that was a word that they used in the, in, under communication. I say I integrated our program services across multiple offices, dot, dot, dot. And I do the same thing for leadership and the complexity. Um, doing this tells the employer that you're attentive. It tells the employer that you're detail-oriented. And it uh, tells the employer that you're smart. And uh, this is the kind of person that's, uh, that employers want to hire. So when you write your letters, your cover letters that go off to internship, that go off with your internship applications and your job applications, do your best to write a letter that's, that's written to the job description. We're going to practice this in class tomorrow, so bring a job or internship description with you to class. Find one, of, preferably it's a job that you'd like to have someday or an internship that you'd like to have this coming summer. And we're going to practice writing a cover letter that will fit the, uh, the, the job description. All right. See you guys tomorrow.